Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Architecting with Google Cloud. Given that we all use a mobile device, we are familiar with the concept of a lock screen and the content that can be served on it. But what if I tell you that 220 plus million active users engage with a specific lock screen service? Four out of five Android devices in India have a lock screen that is personalized, live, available in your local language, and more. We are pleased to bring you this episode to talk about Glance, and I'm thrilled to welcome Arun Prakash from Glance to show and tell us more about their exciting journey. Welcome to the show, Arun. Can you tell us a bit more about your background and what you're doing at Glance? Hey, hi, Roman. Thanks for having me. I'm Arun Prakash, an architect of Glance. I'm part of a central team which takes care of technology research and technology acceleration of adoption in Glance. We are also responsible for cloud infrastructure maintaining and cloud solutioning. Glance itself is a consumer internet company that provides interactive lock screen experience to the end users, including personalized content, hyper live shows, and new gaming experiences, and where you can go and watch live tournaments as well. Thanks, Arun, for sharing the details. Now, going back to the lock screen, given that it's something that's available on phones and, you know, there have been multiple attempts to create a unique experience around it. So what I'm curious about is to learn how Glance went about addressing the lock screen. What is unique about your experience and how has it evolved over the years with different consumer preferences? Initial idea of lock screen was to give dynamic wallpapers according to the user's preference. And over the time, it evolved into something like a smart internet slash media consuming platform. And we have a lot of integration directly with our OEM partners and in India and Indonesia especially. And that uniquely positions Glance as the only and highest scale player in India. In-house, we have news products and gaming and live consuming products, making them seamlessly available on the user lock screen itself. Excellent. So given that it's not just any lock screen experience that we are talking about here, you said it's personalized, it's available in a language of choice, it has live experiences, plus you are doing all of this at scale. So how did you go about achieving that? At glance, the lock screen feed is the main use case and serving fresh content to the lock screen is of utmost importance. So glance has a 400 million plus devices in its user base. So Glance as a system needs to be highly reactive and highly scalable. So to be scalable and to also thrive for user relevant experience. And uh, all our backend systems are containerized and deployed on Kubernetes clusters. So we have active passive Kubernetes clusters just to make sure that we are almost all the time available. And Kubernetes itself takes care of our application scaling as well as infrastructure scaling. And we have a lot of in-memory caches and few distributed caches and few distributed DBs to make sure our latencies are in sub sub seconds, sub mill, like few of them are even sub milliseconds. And microservices architecture is used to democratize different business units to individually operate, build out features and deploy to users. And we have near real time as well as real time personalization engine to give user per request, most eligible contents. Okay. Now that we know how customers use Glance's solution, and you talked about how you are achieving some of the scale, let's deep dive into the user's journey. So could you give us an overview of the architecture, what goes on behind the scenes to achieve this experience? Specifically, you know, I'd like you to break this up into multiple parts. One is how the content is created. Then maybe we can start looking at how the content is served to the users on their lock screens and what makes the whole personalized experience possible. Let's start with the content creation flow. So there are publishers who are creating the content in a CMS portal that we have powered. And that CMS portal takes care of separating the metadata and pushing it into a Cloud SQL DB at the same time, separating the assets and pushing it into blob stores. And now, as the content is available, next is we have to deliver those content to the users. So it starts from user asking for content and that fetch request comes to our load balancer, which also acts as a router, delivers that request to a content server. 
and to decide what content to serve we need a bit of enrichment of the user device so that comes from a user state system where we are storing the user states in a spanner db and it is fetched and enriched and that request is then forwarded to microservices which we talked about where different business units have their own business logic so each of the business units has the responsibility to send most relevant content to the users so now the business units the microservices actually goes and fetches the content from this cloud sql db and it is all the time available in in memory so it not actually fetching the content directly every time and then it does personalization with the help of the tech ci to figure out okay what is the most eligible contents top x ranking contents for each of the business units and that contents are again sent back to the content server which is transformed it to something that is readable by the sdk side and once the content is delivered now the user starts experiencing the contents interacting with the contents so those telemetries are captured on the device side and it is sent as a, another request to the same load balancer now load balancer routes it to a telemetry server which is a event server which just logs all the events as it is into kafka now these kafka events are available as streaming events as well as it has connectors to deploy it in blob stores now these events from blob stores are consumed by vertex ai as well as some of the events directly consumed from kafka by vertex ai to define okay what is the personalization that's happening for the next fetch so that is happening as well on both batch time and real time and we have 15 15 minutes once batch the process is running to make sure we are updating our models on every 15 minutes so that's how the entire system is working thanks arun for taking us uh, through the architecture now given that there were so many uh, technology decisions that you had to make and you had to evolve the solution i'm sure the journey had its ups and downs so could you highlight for us a few challenges that you might have faced as you went and achieved this scale is one of the initial problems that lance has faced so as i said like there are so many devices so many content based requests coming together and how are you going to scale for those requests so initially it was just a vm based jar deployment that was happening and we had to over provision just to make sure we are delivering content we are not dropping requests so then we had to migrate it to containerized and then container instances and then we have started deploying them in kubernetes servers so that the kubernetes itself takes care of the scaling part and the infra cost is also optimized for us and the other major issue was to experience user side of events on the server side so basically users has experienced our device our content sorry and once the content experience is done we need to know like how it has been done on the client side so the telemetries are captured on the device side and sent to us and initially it was just counters and booleans just to know like okay whether the content is delivered whether it was rendered those kind of things now it has been a full fledged pipeline where we are getting real time events real time analytics happening and there are hardly daily roll ups happening and there are custom dashboards for each of the features and business units so directly product or business can go and verify their dashboards and after a major outage to bring clients back up so we have faced those outages couple of times in the past so where the availability zone has gone down our cluster has gone down where we are not able to reach our systems so at that time to bring up itself it's like entirely manual process you have to go and reprovision everything all those things but now we have all our like infrastructure available as iac terraform codes and we just it's a matter of how much time it takes to provision those services and vms on the background for the cloud so everything is automated and we have a lot of storage backups data backups to make sure okay things are coming back online as soon as we have the zone online that's how it is right now and we have behavioral based modeling on our side because there is no user profile directly available so everything is based on behavioral patterns of users so to have 400 million plus devices in real time 
personalization so we had to have our own scale issues to face that and now we have both real time and near real time personalization running smoothly on the cloud and application monitoring was also a issue previously where how do you monitor whether it was through logs or whether it was through metrics how it is going to happen how is it going to appear for the developers so now we have a proper integrated system with a lot of prometheus victor metrics based toolings to cover our grafana dashboards interesting to see the different challenges that you had and how you solved it uh, so looking at uh, some of the challenges which you mentioned around uh, you know scale around personalization around containerization so any specific google cloud services that have helped you uh, you know to achieve some of the points which you mentioned few major offerings that we have accepted from google is basically gke scanner and vertex ai so these are the like most useful tools for us to make sure that our content delivery and the personalization is up to real time so we have gke as a seamless and up to date kates cluster and kubernetes cluster i mean and it is maintained by google cloud itself so all our deployments config management everything is happening through kubernetes itself and spanner in the form of distributed db we are storing more than 400 million device states and a uh, different like behavioral patterns and different user cohorting all those things are happening on spanner so it's like scaling up to tens of thousands of writes and reads and since it is a distributed store we are getting like few millisecond latency to get those data and vertex ai itself is entirely a bigger infrastructure for the serving so because it's doing both near real time and real time personalization for us and we are recently onboarded on live streaming apis where we are giving the user live stream experience through gcp live streaming solution and we have onboarded on gcp's red carpet program which helps us understand how they have architected their solutions so that it helps us onboarding much easier and the major component for a cloud company is basically to understand their cloud costing so cost monitoring as a tool it is directly available from gcp in the form of bigquery and gk usage metering so we get application level ownership of whatever cost that is going to be coming in the bill thanks arun for sharing how you are using google cloud services i'm just curious what we can expect from glance going forward going global is the next major discussion so we are already in presence in india indonesia colombia um, mexico and brazil and as we speak we are making inroads into us and japan and then uh, we are yet to partner with few of the other oems and that is the next and that's going to add to our scale and understanding global consumption of the content and how users behave is an ever evolving process so that's going to be a continuous evolution of changes in the glance systems and some of the uh, gaming and live streaming solutions will have deep integration in gcp itself to provide to the user needs thanks arun for joining our show where can viewers go and learn more about glance we have our company website glance.com where you can go and figure out like how our company operates and then there is a glance screen linkedin page where you can go and see what is happening in the company what are the achievements that are happening in the company what are the shout outs all those things and there is a medium blog uh, that is our tech blog where we keep our engineering researches and whatever recently engineering visions that we have made and what research base had it has happened and it is pretty up to date you can go and check great that brings us to the end of this episode where we saw how glance is bringing personalized and live content to the lock screen of your device if you like the content please share and subscribe to our channel where we continue to bring you awesome tech stories thank you arun for joining us on this show Thanks Roman thanks for having me here thanks everyone till the next episode thanks for watching